So in this part of the video, I am going to go with template matching and I am going to explain that what are different ways in which template matching can be used and I'll share some real life applications with you as well. So there are many applications of computer vision or machine vision where you simply want to know whether a predefined object appears somewhere in the scene or not. This predefined object is called template. And usually this template is an ideal representation of something which may appear in an image. So the objective of template matching is just to calculate some kind of measure of similarity or measure of matching between the template and all the possible locations in an image. So if the object represented by the template is present somewhere in the image, then at that location, the similarity measure is going to be the largest, whereas in other locations, the similarity measure is going to be quite low. So once the template has sweeped the image completely, you just need to find the location where the similarity measure is maximum. And you just are going to guess that over here, this template appears. Template matching can have two different forms. The first one is called global template matching, whereas the second one is called local template matching. In global template matching, the template represents the whole image or the whole object. Whereas in local template matching, usually we use small templates which are not representing the complete object but certain salient feature of the object. For example, if we have this kind of object which we want to find in our image and we have a template for it as well, it will look like this if we are talking about global template matching. So we are going to sweep this template over the image and somewhere we are going to find this thing. But if we are talking about local template matching, then we might have these kind of templates. For example, this thing, which is signifying an end point over here. We might have another template, for example, like this one, which is signifying this area. And we might have another template, for example, like this one, that is signifying this end point over here. So we are using instead of one complete template, we are using three smaller templates to figure out or to find the object that contains these three kind of features in it. You must be wondering that what is the use of local template matching. Instead of using one simple template, we are using three different complex templates. So just hold on to that thought and I'll clear this point in the later half of this portion of the lecture. So what is measure of similarity? There are different ways to figure out measure of similarities. We can use different mathematical functions, which I'm going to list down. Some are based on summation of differences and some techniques are based on cross correlation calculations. For example, one of the measure of similarity is Euclidean distance measure. You're just going to figure out or you are just going to calculate Euclidean distance between the template and the overlapping image. The mathematical function for this thing is quite simple, which is this one. You are calculating the difference between the image and the template at a particular location given by M and N. You are squaring it and you are taking the summation and then you are taking the square root. This is nothing but calculation of Euclidean distance. So what is happening over here? For example, if this is an image and you want to perform this kind of template matching on this image, then you'll place this template in the first point over here. Now this is the area where template is overlapping with the image. You're going to take the difference of the corresponding elements of the template and the image. You're going to square that those differences up. Then you are going to sum up all these differences. And then at the, at the last step, you're going to take the square root. Let me give you an example with concrete numbers. Suppose that you have this template and this image. It is just a portion of the image. For simplicity, I've drawn only four rows and four columns. And you want to apply a template match 
attaching onto this image. So the first step would be to place the template over here at this location. This is the first location. You're going to subtract the corresponding element of the image and the template. For example, you're going to subtract this 3 from this 2, this 3 from this 0, this 3 from this 1. And in the similar fashion, this 0 from this 3, this 3 from this 3, this 0 from this 3, and similarly this 0 from this 0, this 0 from this 3, and this 0 from this 0. So there are going to be 9 subtractions. After you have subtracted these things, you are going to take their squares and then add them up. After addition, you are going to take the square root. This is going to give you a Euclidean distance between this template and this portion of the image. So what it will be? So if I calculate this thing, it will come out to be this one. The first value over here would be 2 minus 3, it's square, that would be 1, plus second value would be 0 minus 3, it's square, that would be 9. Then 1 minus 3, that would be 2, it's square, 4, and so on. Now, if you sum them up, it is going to be 41. So, this would be the distance or the measure of similarity if you are using Euclidean distance technique. Now, you know that somewhere this template is going to match exactly with the image. What is the application and how you are going to find it? So, the first step was to calculate distance at each step. So, you will move this template one step forward. That is, this template would be moved in this direction and now the template would be over here. So, you are going to calculate this distance once again and you are going to get some Number. After some time, this template will definitely come over here at this location. When this template would be at this location, you can see that the distance between the template and the image would come out to be zero. In this example, the distance is coming out to be zero, but in practical real images, the difference will never come out to be zero, but it will come out to be minimum. So in those applications, we would be looking for minimum distance instead of zero distance because zero distance will never appear. So I hope you have understood that how measure of similarity can be calculated using Euclidean distance. In a similar fashion, we can have different measures of similarities. For example, absolute difference measure. In this technique, we are just subtracting the template from the image and summing those values up. Another measure of of similarity is squared difference measure. We are going to take the difference and then we are going to square it up. So this formula is nothing but an expansion of this formula. If you expand this formula, you'll get the written formula over here. But over here you can see that these two terms are redundant because these are constants. These two terms are never going to change because the image which we are using is a constant image and the template which we are using is a constant one. So these two quantities are constant. So if we can omit these two quantities, we would be left with this thing. And this thing is called cross correlation. This is the most used measure of similarity in template matching domain. We can also sometime normalize it by dividing it with the complete magnitude like this. So we are dividing the cross correlation with the magnitude of the image and of the template. So this thing is just for normalizing the cross correlation. Apart from these measure of similarities, there can be a number of measure of similarity depending on the complexity, depending on the application or depending on the mathematical expertise you can have or you can use different measure of similarities. So here is an example where there is one image containing some alphabets and you have a template containing one alphabet that is small a. So if you want to find this small a in this complete image, then you are going to place this a at all the locations of this image, for example. So as the first step, this a would be placed over here like this. The measure of similarity would be calculated. Then it will be moved on one step ahead. 
and again the measure of similarity would be calculated this process would be repeated until this template comes over here and measure of similarity is calculated at this location so once you have done this thing the next step would be to find the locations or the points where the measure of similarity was maximum by maximum i mean that locations where the image is matching the template because if you are using some similarity measure that is calculating the difference then the areas where template is completely matching the image you are going to get minimum mathematical value and at those location we would say that template is maximally matching the image so these are the four locations which are highlighted with the red square at these four locations the template matching algorithm is going to give you the minimum mathematical value or the perfect matching or the maximum matching so this was global template matching where we have the complete template of what we wanted to find now what is local template matching there are different problems associated with global template matching one of them is that the template represents an object or part of it as we expect it to appear in the image but what if there is that object in that image but it is not in that same orientation or in that same scale for example in this image which you are currently seeing you wanted to find something for for example this s you also have a template for this s so it would be quite simple to just sweep that template over this image and somewhere where there is a match you are going to get a very low numerical value and you will say that okay s is present over here it is also present over here and over here and there might be somewhere else as well but what if i have written s like this or what if i have written s like this so this s is exactly equal to this one but of a different scale this s is also exactly equal to the s which we are trying to find but it has a different orientation now how template matching is going to cope with it So till now, we haven't given any recognition to variation in scale or in orientation. We were expecting that the template which we had will appear in the image as it is. But if we know that the object which we are trying to find may appear in the image but in different orientation, then we may have different templates for different orientation for example for the same s we may have this template we may also have this one we may also have this one we may also have this one so these all four templates will be used and if any of these will match somewhere we would say that this s is present over there but obviously you can see that this thing will become computationally expensive instead of using one template now we are using four or sometimes more than four templates and especially if the size of the template is large then it would be quite troublesome for us so one popular way of alleviating this thing is to use templates use small local templates not to detect the complete object but to detect some salient features of that object. But the challenge over here would be to figure out the features which are orientation or scale independent. That is, if the object is appearing in some other orientation, the feature should not change. Or if the object is appearing in a different scale, the feature should remain the same. I'll try to clear this thing up with an example. Consider this example in which we want to find out this part and we have a template for it but in the template this object or this part is appearing in one particular orientation but in the image this part is appearing in four different orientations so how this simple single template can be used to find out all these objects two features that we can readily see over here are these two for example if we try to look for this circle then no matter what is the orientation of the object this circle is going to appear a circle so as a first step we are going to find all circles present in this image so obviously we are going to 
come over here, over here, over here, and over here. But the circle alone is not going to give us the complete picture. For example, if you have detected this circle, then this object might be appearing like this. And there are many different possibilities that the circle is over here, but the object is appearing in some different orientation. So we need at least one other point, And by joining those two points, we can figure out the orientation of the complete object. So we need one other feature. For example, I can use this part of the circle. So now I'm going to find this circle and definitely it would be found over here, over here, over here and over here. I've chosen these two features which are circles deliberately because circles are some things that are not going to change whether I have changing, whether I have changed the orientation or not. If I have used any other feature, it would have changed with the orientation. For example, if I used this 90 degree angle or corner, then the template would look like this. It will match over here, but it will not match anywhere else in the image. So this local template will not do me good. So that's why the feature which we are going to use as local templates, those features must be orientation and possibly size invariant. So the features which we are going to use as local template, they must be orientation and possibly size invariant. One last example of template matching is of face recognition. For example, you have a training set or a database in which you have images of face of different person. A new face comes and you want to know that who is this new person. So what you will do, you will measure the similarity of all the faces present in your database with this new face and you are going to get some images. For example, these one. You, you just need to compare all the images with the new face that is coming and using some similarity measure, you need to calculate that measure. For example, square of absolute differences. If you figure that thing out, then you'll have these numbers and you can see that over here, the value is the minimum, which means that this face maximally matches this new unknown face. So your system will say that the new unknown face is of this person.